Hello and welcome to the item interactions. Today, the item is at a very unique place with a very unique person. Syed Naqvi, one of the legends of Indian journalism, one of the great experts of international affairs in Indian journalism, the man who got the first interview after Nelson Mandela got released from his long incarceration, man who was interviewed world leaders like Gorbachev, Nazar, Kissinger, and uh, continues his work even today. But interestingly, we have caught up with Said Saab. Today, we have caught up with Said Saab at his ancestral house in Mustafabad, in Unchahar, in rival district of Uttar Pradesh. This house, at least parts of the house, the original foundations of the house uh, were made nearly 400 years ago, and the house itself has a phenomenal history. But then we will talk about the history of the house, the talk of the, of the history of the sides in this location, but then we would like to first come to the contemporary situation here, which is the current ongoing elections to the Uttar Pradesh Assembly. And it's a very important election by any, any, by any means, by any account. So, Said Saab, you have come here to your village, and of course, you are in the heart of the election campaign. We are going to see the polling here in a few days. Uh, first of all, let me welcome you to the item, but then uh, you, are, you are always... Congratulations for launching it. It's <laughs> okay. required. How do you look at the elections when you, when you, when you are here in Mustafabad? Venkatesh, there are three distinct perspectives on any election. One I call the bird's eye view which means this microcosm from above you, as you go, it becomes the, the state, the country, the region at least. And this election is going to affect it all. That's the bird's eye view. The second is the ground deal, zero coverage, which is what you are doing. You've been to constituency to constituency. I have covered elections in the past and I was feeling a little left out. Every people were coming and reporting to me and being a habitual journalist and nothing else. I said, what should I do? So I said, let us find a worm's eye view. In other words, locate myself in my ancestral home in the Qasba of Mustafabad and see things from here, which is, uh, uh, which is what I have so I'm been what, doing. So what, what are you seeing? Well, what I'm seeing is that uh, this, you see, don't forget, this is uh, caste without caste, nothing works in India and even among Muslims. So this was a basti. This was a place where a whole a caravan of Sayyids was, uh, came and settled down in two portions. One is called Patak Bhitar which is this area, and the other is called Bhitari Gaon, which is the inside village, which is a little further. So about 300 houses. It is like uh, your Agriharam, uh, <laughs> roughly <laughs> like that. And uh, except that here there is a lot of mixture, and uh, the, all the supporting caste and paraphernalia uh, is there, and they are the ones who are actually participating in the elections. The old rural, the elite, the, the landed gentry of day before, day before yesterday, who now faded, their scions, their children, are now trying to make, make some adjustments with the new politics. Like what? Habitually, they were congressmen for two reasons. Because in this Awadh area, there was no other party, don't forget. There was, I mean, BJP is a, after, until 1984, there was no BJP, you see. So therefore, Congress. Then from this house, this very house, the, my uncle, Vasi Nakhvi, was the first Congress MLA from Ravarelli. Around his assembly constituency, 
Feroz Gandhi wove his parliamentary constituency, which I saw as a toddler. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So therefore, there is a and there's a huge history. We have a, a political family from that, but this house is very strange. On the one hand, you had these nationalist congressmen. On the other, they were communists. And my mother's side was slightly more educated, so they were all communists. Okay. These were the two. Now, everyone congregated here for Muharram, for Muharram remembering the Battle of Karbala, etc. And all of them came, the communists and the congressmen and the laity. They attended these majlises. There was one distinction. While when the tragedy was being unfolded, the nationalists wept. The uh, communists kept a stoic <laughs> and very, <laughs> very, because otherwise they would be found out to be religious and religiosity because they're unscientific. So what they were very respectful, they attended, but you could distinguish okay, who is who is who. The one who is not crying is a communist. The one who is crying is is unscientific congressman. That is the way it was. At the moment, they, this local, the politics is controlled by not the elite. It is, they're trying to play a little role, but they are completely on the margins. I don't think anyone from Mustafabad, from the great Sayyid hierarchy ever, ever won an election except my uncle from Radharili. Really. Right. That was because the old Congress link, but not Mustafabad itself. Here, Mauryas have been the, you mean the, the, the backward caste association? Backward caste and uh, now, the other day something interesting happened. Now, this is a very local event. The Safdar Haider Nakhvi is a cousin. Everyone in this colony are cousins. I mean, they're all from the same clan. And how, how what, what are the geographical parameters of this colony? How, how far does it stretch? Uh, it would be, it is within a walk from here, this is the last house uh -huh. and the biggest house, yeah. from here to the other village would be a walk of about a mile and a half, that's okay. all. Okay. It's a small, right. small, two miles. And as I said, 300 houses, yeah. not more than that. And uh, mostly living on some youngsters who've gone away, who send remittances, who become doctors in England, or who are doing... The, the, the economy is mostly, mostly remittance because they've been pulverized by their own feudal past and have done very little. Right. Thank they you. are getting out into businesses also. Yeah. They are trying to play. This fellow came in and as he came in, he said, you know, something interesting has happened. You, you've come here. So he wanted to draw me into the story. Two or three other cousins joined me. They were all Congress workers. Karve Kartas, they said. And he says, you know, today Kishori Lal Sharma came here. Now Kishori Lal Sharma, no one would give a tuppence for in Delhi or even in Lucknow. But in these areas, the Kishori Senate. Lal Sharma was planted by the Gandhi family, Nehru Gandhi family, per courtesy Satish Sharma. Okay. Satish Sharma brought a fellow called KL uh, Kishori Lal. And he was to look after the patrimony, the, the two Jagirs of the Gandhi, namely Rabarili and Amethi. Yeah. All right. So he did that up to a point. Then came, then came a phase in Priyanka in 2014 when they heard that they're not going to get any seat. Priyanka jumped into the fray and she came and she worked in both these constituencies right. and got because without the family being in parliament, what were they going to do? So she, otherwise, Kishori Lal Sharma would arrange shamianas, samosas, tea, for sarpanches, all the influential people in the catchment area of the two constituencies waiting for Priyanka to turn up. Hmm. She seldom did. She seldom did. 
she simply i have i we've been very close to the the family uh, rajiv was a, a friend of mine but i can tell you now, now that they are in public life i don't think i can say with any with any certainty that she simply does not have the stamina to be in it for a long 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 haul so she this is about the longest she's done really right right now and after if by chance which is likely she, she gets another debacle another defeat so that she'll be wearing one two three fourth uh, memento of defeat will she be demoralized i don't think so i think they've developed a very thick skin on this okay so we will hold on okay. so anyway kishori lal sharma came and they said these boys now are getting very uh, agitated aapko apna sab theek karna padega is tarah se nahi chalega tum ghabrao nahi ghabrao nahi kishori lal sharma sab theek ho jayega kal ke yahan pe aapne pande ji ko laga diya hai aur congress congress is manoj pande yeah not congress samajwadi party samajwadi party yeah. samaj now yeah. the allegation is yeah. that kishori lal okay. is primarily a brahman okay ha okay. congress and other affiliations come later okay. therefore he is helping hmm. uh, manoj pande of the samajwadi party to yeah. win okay therefore the slogan here yeah. not that it matters yeah. not that it matters i don't know it whether it does yeah. the slogan here is akhilesh se bair nahi yeah. manoj pande ki khair nahi okay you see yeah. so in other words yeah. you see see the game yeah, yeah. so this is what happens at the grassroots level right and uh, so but uh, the other maurya the fellow who defected the 10 yeah. was here yeah he was i i didn't realize it yeah, yeah. that we had such vips in our vicinity mm-hmm. i i used to come to this yeah, but place. he was saying historically uh, the 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 politics of this region was not exactly controlled by the elite but the there was a backward caste association mm. right from the early times yes yeah but uh, congress was able to manage that uh, backward caste association congress ha- had that that traditional balance was mm. uh, uh, harijans they, they were called dalits was not the word harijans mm. muslim brahman a sort of sprinkling of uh, sprinkling of that yeah, that they would win yeah. the, the the congress had not splintered the co- national movement national movement was a confederation of interests behind a program for freedom right once freedom happened they began to fall apart 1967 was the first big when, when mrs gandhi lost six eight states yeah. you see and that continued the churning has continued it's a very strange thing people forget krishna menon who was as close to the communist party as you can get and uh, patel sk patel who was as close to the swatantra party right wing liberal neo economic policy both these were candidates for the congress in different constituencies of bombay yeah. in mumbai so that gives you the the right. scale of the the difference that is it but yeah the, i don't but know but this this assertion has changed its political contours in the sense in terms of party politics uh, the congress lost its control then uh, the mandalized parties took over and of course the kamandal also came and uh, the backward caste communities got split between the mandal parties like the samajwadi party and dalit part, dalit the strong section of the dalit uh, community went to the bojan samaj party and uh, the the bjp through its social engineering they were able to capture the non yadav obcs and most backward castes and a section of dalits so in terms of political party structuring uh, the the assertion and the dominance has shifted to these parties now so that is the situation here but you see, i, I would like to ask one more question because uh, you saying about the two factions of this the side some I mean the nationalists and the communists the communists at one point of time had fairly considerable influence in this entire region especially in uttar pradesh what do you think is the reason for the the, the complete collapse of the communist party what was the collapse of the whole uh, left i think the left was hit given a a severe body blow 
and a fatal injury when the Soviet Union collapsed, basically. The collapse of the Soviet Union was a huge body blow to the communist movement in India. Uh, those who had distanced themselves from the Soviet Union to some extent, namely the CPM, survived in the enclaves of West Bengal, Tripura and in Kerala. And, uh, but otherwise, CPI, which was the mother party, it's completely disintegrated. All they have is Ajay Bhavan, which they should run as, a, as an ashram or a hotel or something. <laughs> you know, really. Otherwise, there's nothing. So that is why all these people, it's very interesting. But there is also a stream of opinion which says that North India has always been a problem, including for the CPM, because it did not understand the caste composition of this region and the complexities that... Uh, you see, the, the educated, unemployed, got into the... Van wherever there was industry, Kanpur, for instance. So S.M. Banerjee was the leader. He was the Communist Party of India. But wherever the educated, unemployed was cornered by one secretary general of the CPI called P.C. Joshi, he thought of soft power. So he created this whole thing of uh, Indian People's Theatre Association, IPTA, Progressive Writers Association. All these people went to Mumbai. In Mumbai, they lived in communes. Yeah. Those communes became, the, the commune, became the resource for cinema, for songs, which Lata Mangeshkar sang. Right. You see, so you had Majrul Sultan Puri and Sahir Ludhyanvi and Jan Isar Akhtar, all these people. Even Emma Fusain. Yeah, Emma yeah. Fusain at another scale, yeah. yes. Yeah. They, was a, yeah. they formed another association. Yeah. So left in the art world was very, very influential at that stage. You must remember. I mean, we will be straying a little bit. But Chetan Anand was no raving Marxist. But he made Nietzsche Nagar in 1948, which is nothing but class war. Absolutely. And Lata Mangeshkar sang there. Yeah. And uh, then it, Bimal Roy took it over hmm. in uh, Do Bigha hmm. And again, Lata was singing there. So you had this amalgamation which was creating uh, even the phenomenon of, of Lata Mangeshkar, which people forgot. Yeah, so coming back to this, uh, this political question again, I mean, contemporary hmm. politics, hmm. Uh, uh, let, me, let me, the, the important thing is the Muslim factor here, yeah. the Muslim. The Muslim factor in UP has been important because they were totally with the Congress. When they got disenchanted with the Congress, partly because of the Muslim, Babri Masjid, and Babri Masjid, they, they were convinced. Firstly, Rajiv Gandhi did the Shala Nyas. He opened the temple. And he thought that he would balance it with Shah Banu. It never got balanced. He opened the, the masjid for Hindu prayers. That's yeah, what he did. Yeah. In he did that. Yeah. Then hmm. P.V. Narasimha Rao slept through the yeah. demolition of the mosque. Yeah. So the Muslim was convinced that he'd been had totally. Yeah. So arm mass, he walked away and his, his P.V. got 140 seats, the lowest that Congress had ever had. Where had the Muslim gone? They had this cuckoo idea that now the caste politics has opened up, we will go with the OBCs mm. and the Dalits. So they went and clustered themselves with Dalits. When, now, now that is where communalism got aggravated. Because the, Mus, the Hindu elite, the ruling class saw the Muslim really tinkering with the caste structure. Right. right. You know, that aggravated the politics a great deal. Mm. And Muslim himself got it both ways. Okay. This expression is na ghar ka raha na ghat ka raha. Mm. He mm. was neither here nor there mm. because here he got nothing. Mayavati was for her caste. The Lal, uh, Ram Singh Yadav was for his was, Well, he may have shot a few uh, kar sevaks to please them emotionally, but he did nothing for the Muslims. So the Muslim didn't know where the hell to go. So he still is there. Hmm. But every now and again, the Congress imagines that we will, he will vote for them. This time, I think the calculus has changed. The Muslim 
will vote for whoever they calculate is about to defeat the BJP. Right, right. right. They will say, in this you have got, that means my SP, Congress, BSP are not together in defeating the BJP. I mean, this is an amazing signal. But the people are going to desert these parties, those who they perceive as not, except for the habitual jato voter for the Bahujan Samaj, Samaj Party. That is my that is my take from here.